Um, hello, my name is Jamie Flood. I'm the Senior Wikipedia and Outreach Coordinator at the United States Department of Agriculture, National Agricultural Library. Uh, I always say the whole thing because on Wikipedia, not everybody knows every acronym, and we love acronyms at the government. Uh, I'm sorry. I am the co-chair of the DPLA Wikimedia Working Group with Evan Rao. Uh, Evan could not be with us today, but he's out in Washington State. I don't remember which hub they're contributing to. Northwest? I think the Northwest hub, something like that. Uh, we did this presentation a few months ago, Northwest Digital Heritage. Uh, Thank you, Christine. Christine's also going to be presenting with me. I'll let her. Do you want to introduce yourself now or when you start talking? I'll, I'll introduce myself when I start talking. Sounds good. So, we did this presentation a little bit ago as a coffee chat for the DPLA network, and then uh, we went over very well. So, we wanted to share it more broadly. So, these are a few of the things we're going to talk about. Just kind of a brief introduction about why, why GLAM tools matter, why tools matter for DPLA. Uh, we're going to talk about a few different things, metrics and tracking tools, uh, easy editing tools, one of which I designed or worked on designing, uh, data tools, and then we will share a little bit about the GlamWiki CSI, which Andrew Lee will be talking about, I think, later today. So like I mentioned, uh, it's chaired by Evan Robb and myself. It includes eight other individuals, including Do Dominic Bird McDevitt. We represent a variety of institutions. Not all of those institutions are DPLA contributors. Some of us are just Wikipedia experts. The projects include a meta-based page pilot where a presentation archive is hosted as well. This is our one of our main projects, uh, meta wiki based page pilot where we have a presentation archive, including this one that includes slides and video. Uh, we also have the best practices documents around navigating the DPLA pipeline, and then also navigating uh, having events and things like that. That's one of the things we're trying to support is more hubs and institutions in those hubs offering uh, collaboration and events to share their media on Wikipedia to increase some of that impact. Uh, and then information about Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons editing, and then about the DPLA pipeline as a whole and how you can join that service. And of course, getting in touch with us. And then uh, this, uh, we also talk about things like what this is demonstrating from the Met in 2017, and just kind of the power of Wikipedia and how much more views you can get when you include images on Wikipedia from your collections. So where do pipeline uploads live? Hopefully you've heard of DPLA and you know about the pipeline. Uh, all of them live on commons. They're all connected through the media contributed by DPLA, and then they're separated out institutionally. So why, why does this matter? Why do these tools matter? Tracking creates a better picture of the impact of the pipeline uploads outside of just institutional page views. Uh, I talked a little bit yesterday about how uh, my uploads on commons receive over 4 million views a month, and there is literally nothing on our my institution's website or a collection that receives that many, that comes anywhere close. I want to say our most viewed item has about 10 to 20,000, but we get 4 million on Wikipedia and its sister projects. Uh, one of the things that we stress, you don't have to edit, nobody has to learn how to edit but it does create an easy opportunity for volunteers and students to increase access to materials. And when you have a, when you, your staff has some Wikipedia knowledge, that's great too. It's a, it's an easy lift to include these things. And most importantly, we're here to help you. We're interested, and especially if you're interested in doing more than just pipeline uploads, but we're also interested in helping get new institutions uh, up to the pipeline. So, Giovanna, do you remember this? Can you tell more about this graphic? Do you remember? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I believe these are, this This is the DPLA uh, pipeline metrics for all of the uploads, I think. So there's over 4 million distinct media within 
the pipeline that's being given to Commons right now. Uh, and that's in use on 47,000 plus pages. And we're working on increasing that number of utilization of pages utilizing items from this collection. Uh, Obviously, English Wikipedia is using it the most, but it's also in use on a lot of other different language options, too. And I know some of us are trying to increase usage on other languages as well. And then uh, another nice thing that we're demonstrating is there's a couple different ways that you can look at mass use and analysis. This is from DPLA. Unfortunately, I don't think it's being updated right now. We're trying to change over how this works. Uh, and then this mass views, page views analysis uh, uh, is an easy link that you can add and you can put, you just put in the topic of the page and you can even compare two pages uh, and you can look at over time how views have increased or decreased. And then at this point, I'm going to not do that transition to our video, maybe. Nope. There we go. Actually, I'm so sorry. Rachel's going to take us back a little bit to talk about this. Good. Um, uh, these are what I consider the foundational um, metric for that a lot of other tools use. Um, so let me just show you how to access this from any given Wikipedia page. This is a page that I created recently. I was just right this um I was searching for images that used the work in the block and I was able to find this one on Wikimedia Commons just by Google like quilts, log cabin, courthouse steps. And uh, I thought that would be a great, you know, lead from the, the information Jamie was telling us about, you can discover images. Well, I discovered all these cool images just using Wikimedia Commons because they need to start to illustrate the very instance of log cabin cool block. Okay, so from from any Wikipedia page, if you go to view history, and then if you go to page statistics, it will show you the no, wait, page statistics. Not page statistics, page views. Um, it will show you the page views of, of any page on Wikipedia. And um, like Wikipedia itself, um, the, the code tracks these views. And um, since I created this page recently, it only started getting views since when I created it. So just kind of like ease you into how to read this. And you know, when it was first created, it got a lot of views of people like probably on new page control or uh, people looking at new pages. And after a month or so, it'll even out. It'll be like three views a day or something. Um, now, I want to show you another example from uh, a more uh, viewed page, the Topaz War Relocation Center page. Uh, since this is a new topic, it's really a collection to it, and I've also worked on this page. But I want to show you that um, we use a lot of images from the um, National Archives, like here's one, and then um, there's five in total. And um, what this means for image sets is that if one person looks at this page, it counts as a view for all of those images. And if I were from our and like recording image views, it would count as a view for like each of each of those five images. Um, but that that view count can be somewhat inflated sometimes because like. What if I just came to this page and I just put the the uh, the lead? I might not have even looked at those other images. Or if I was on mobile, it counts as a view uh, for those images, but it might not have, like actually be a view. So that's going to be relevant later when we talk about the tools that I use um, this as a base. So the history, page views, and then the cool. There's some cool things about this tool you can change to say, oh, show me all the views from this year, and then. You can sometimes you can trace back the site um, to mention to the media or in a classroom or something. Um, and this is just one page, but you can use there's um, the mass view part of it. This is where you can look at image views from entire categories of pages. So, um, you know, say that I was interested in a quilting page, um, I could just copy the URL into mass view and I want to include the subject. Category and let's just see this year. 
what were the most popular pages in the clothing category? Um, I was surprised when I looked at this, I was like, hey, Rainbow, who's that? She's, um, she's a famous artist who wrote for Narrative Pulse. So that was really cool to find out. Um, it's useful for more than just, hey, that's cool. I actually have, um, I have a hidden maintenance category that I use to track all the pages that I've edited. And, um, and so, you know, when it comes time at the end of the year to talk about what my group has done, um, I include this as part of my report, but I'm not sure this is the best way to do it. There's, there's some other ways to do it, but if you want to try this, like, talk to me and we'll figure out the best way. But, um, let's see, oh, did I, I forgot to do, um, Usually, um, someone warned me this would happen, and I didn't do this ahead of time, but um, usually the actor is her this year. What is this category? Oh, include the subject page and search targets. Um, for, for a variety of reasons, the top page is where this category has to go. So, um, You'll see that, yeah, Jimmy Stewart, he's been on top of the page over the time. So um, that's about everything I wanted to say, and let's go on to the next person. I'll stop sharing. Okay, that was really interesting. I don't think I've never heard of the maintenance category. So, uh, wait a second. <laughs> I just want to share two things. First, the so you just heard was Rachel Helps. She's a Wikipedia resident at Brigham Young University Library. Uh, this is Evan Rom, who we've already mentioned. Uh, one thing that I want to add to, you'll hear us talking a lot about using these tools maybe in ways that they aren't necessarily intended for. And if you've talked to me at all this weekend, I feel very strongly about impact metrics and uh, thing navigating uh, knowing your impact of Wikipedia for your boss in particular. Uh, and so a lot of that is us sharing the ways that we're using these tools to do that. So we'll get back to Evan now. Thank you already. Uh, so hi, I'm Evan. I'm at the Washington State Library and I am a co-coordinator of the Northwest Regional Heritage Hub. And um, I've been using a couple of tools to gauge how our uh, content is being used. And this is just those, those really great raw uh, page view statistics that we're able to access through our, uh, our Wikimedia Commons pipeline page. So here's that. Um, it, you'll see that. So each institution represented here is assigned its own category, and that category is used to uh, perform a search or a query using some of these Wikimedia tools to determine how the content is being used. So the first one I really found useful is called Glamorous. Um, and all you have to do is enter that exact uh, category string here. So in this case, I've entered media contributed by Seattle Public Library. Uh, there is, uh, you can search, you can also include the depth of your search. Uh, it's my understanding that refers to the depth of uh, Wikipedia or Wikimedia category. Uh, so you can have potentially, as um, as Rachel just pointed out, you can have you can create multiple subcategories in Wikimedia or Wikipedia. In this case, there's only one category for Seattle Public Library's content, so I'll leave it at that. This tool also allows you to search by uh, specific users and pages. Um, and uh, I haven't found that to be that useful for my uses. Um, but this is what it looks like. So um, here are some individual images from the Seattle Public Library's content. First one is a jazz pianist. And you can see that um, this image has been used 17 times across the Wikipedia universe, uh, Wikipedia in multiple languages, and also down here, you'll see uh, a Wikidata uh, QID. Now, what that means is this picture of jazz pianist Paul Blay was used for his Wikipedia or Wikidata um, page. And so 
Wikidata is really uh, an important part of web search. When you search Google, and you'll often see a knowledge panel here to the right of your search results, and these images from Wikidata show up in the search results. So uh, this has really been a great way to get more of our cultural heritage content in Wikidata, and then uh, have it appear elsewhere across the web. Uh, you'll see something similar for this image of Bobby Hutton, who is an early member of the Black Panther Party, also has a, a Wiki Data Association. Uh, Margaret Pettit was a uh, choreographer and dancer, and it's really interesting to see that not only was this image used for her Wiki Data page, but um, it was taken up by the Wiki project Women in Red. Uh, red links in, in Wikipedia refer to articles that need to be created or need a little bit more work. Um, and so uh, it was through this uh, tool that I learned that the, the Women in Red project exists, and that gave me some ideas for how our hub or our library could um, do some additional programming in the future, like the Wikipedia Editathon to focus on specific wiki projects, topics, or themes. Um, and this also gives me a lot of great ideas for uh, how I can do a better job of reporting on the impact or outcomes of our participation in this project. So that's glamorous. It kind of gives you a, a, a snapshot view of all of your content in, or all of the specific categories content in Wikipedia. Uh, since we're at the beginning of time, you can narrow it down by date. So uh, the Seattle Public Library has 150-ish uh, pages using its files, and it's being used in about 40 different languages across the board. Yeah, so that makes it uh, really useful for me to, to report to our funding funders. Uh, this other tool is called Glam Morgan. So it's named after a county as well. Um, and I've been using this more for a uh, month level uh, overview. It's very similar to Glamorous, but I, I can uh, easily narrow it down by month to see what um, what files are being used most commonly. So this is uh, a search on June 2024. We see an illustration from uh, from a um, alternative weekly from the 1960s in, uh, in Seattle. So they use the 2001 Space Odyssey image from a local artist. In the 2001 Space Odyssey Wikipedia page. Oh, okay. Uh, there's some psychedelic art from the same. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think he just kept giving us some really great examples. I hope it's okay, but just to, in the essence of time, I'm going to quickly move through it. Um, these slides will be up. I'm sorry, I am not talking on this thing. Uh, just uh, my apologies. Um, the slides are up on Commons, or I'll, I need to tag them into our conference uh, category. But we do have screenshots of everything that we've talked about, so you can easily follow uh, without having to watch the video if you don't want to, or in case you can't don't want to watch it again. Uh, and it's all the video itself of this whole presentation is up on YouTube. It. If I do say so myself, it might be better than than this presentation, <laughs> which is on me. Um, okay, I will quickly run through a couple things that I want to share, and then I'm going to pass it over to Christine, and she'll close us out. So, a couple of the ways that I track our work on Wikipedia, um, especially our events, is through the outreach dashboard and the event metrics dashboard. Uh, this is what my outreach dashboard looks like when I sign in. Uh, you can, I forgot to mention, I'm one of the facilitators of the Central Indiana Wiki, Wikipedia Partnership and one of your organizers for this year's conference. Um, but you can see that I, I have that program and we track all of our events in there. Uh, one of the things that I have is cam I start a campaign that I add multiple events to. So I can pull individual event metrics, but I can also pull entire campaign metrics. And those are what I use to report at the end of the year. And um, 
I am so sorry. Let me also make this bigger. That would be very helpful. Uh, it's very easy to do. Just follow the prompts. And after you save it, you when you're on this screen, you can add it to your uh, your campaign to keep track of it. You can't do it in that. You can't do it in this screen. You have to go back and do it. Uh, and then you'll have all your information there. You can see all the folks added to it. And then uh, th this is updated since then, but you'll see all the articles created, how many editors there were, how many articles you worked on, how many references you added. Uh, and then of course, at the end of the year, those numbers grow greatly. And that's, I just screenshot this and put it in my report and send it to my boss. Uh, and then event metrics, again, very similar but you have to manually add all the editors to yourself. It also documents a few additional things, like how many editors that joined were actually new editors. So they made their uh, account within the, the five days of that event. Uh, and then it will also even tell you uh, who continued to edit after the event, which is really nice. Uh, and again, I'll have this in there. I'll take a screenshot of it, and I just include that in my report. And then this is how you create a new event. Uh, adding participants is really easy. You just make a list of them and then click Save, and then it'll show them to you individually if you need to remove someone. Uh, and then again, once I have everything together, I can pull these broader metrics from the event metrics dashboard uh, and it can show me impact and again that participation, how many new editors who continue to edit after seven days. And every time you check this will change because you might have someone who disappeared for seven days, but then they came back later and it'll track that. Uh, and then if you want to know more about the view it tool, I'm happy to talk to you about it. If you look it up on YouTube, there's multiple videos of it. It's also one of the coolest tool award. Just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, but it provides you with a carousel of images on an art on a given article when you have it added to your account. And when you are editing that uh, when you are editing that article, it shows up a copy button and you just easily copy and paste it in. If you're uh, into Wikidata and you have something that doesn't have a P18 statement, you just click the plus button and it automatically adds a P18 statement for you. It's pretty great if I do say so myself. Um, installation is easy. If you look us up, view it tool on Meta, you can follow the installation instructions. And now I believe it's time for Christine. I think we only have yeah. a couple of minutes, I'm sorry. We have like 30 seconds, but cool. Um, we can do this. Okay, um, so we will skip the risky live demo part of this talk. Um, I'm just gonna put this away, I don't have to hold it. Um, uh, so I'm, uh, hi, I'm Christine Prince of Nureslau. I'm a metadata librarian at um, Harvard Library at IPS, uh, which stands for Information and Technical Services because we also love acronyms. Can people hear me or is this picking up? Yeah, okay. Good. Um, and uh, so I've mostly, um, so Harvard is a DPLA hub, um, but our involvement with Wikidata predates that. Um, I mostly edit Wikidata and not Wikipedia, which this is a pretty common um, personality flaw in metadata librarians. Um, and uh, so uh, I'm going to show just a couple of tools very quickly that I've used for assessing the outcomes of edit-a-thons, um, uh, edit-a-thons focused on Wikidata. And so the first one is the item quality evaluator, which I believe was developed by uh, Wikimedia Deutschland. And um, as you can see from the screenshot here, you can insert, um, if you squint, uh, you can insert uh, a Sparkle query there. There's also a tab that lets you, um, oh, sorry, insert uh, an item list. So it's just like Q numbers, you know, you could just copy and paste from like a spreadsheet. Um, and it gives you um, a ranking uh, based on uh, or scores on uh, how high quality your items are. Obviously, it can't uh, tell you about the veracity of the statement. It's evaluating it in terms of like what are the, you know, how many properties that you would expect for this instance type are present. Um, uh, and it gives you output that looks like this. And um, if we resorted this, which I'm not going to do because we're not going to do this live, um, you would see that like, you know, the highest score is like, you know, uh, several points higher and it's only for like Mary McLeod Bethune. Um, this was for a, 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 um, an edit-a-thon about black teachers. I'm giving a lightning talk about that sometime in the next couple hours. Yes. And um, later in room three. Okay. And uh, so if you want to hear more about that, please come to that. Um, uh, but so it gives you this sort of like kind of arbitrary feeling numerical score between uh, one and five. 
and it's not really a judgment on your work or the work of your participants. It's just a, 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 a useful tool when you acknowledge the reality that no matter how good your instructions are or how good your, um, your volunteers are at a live edit-a-thon type of event, you're going to get really varied outcomes with um, you know, uh, different levels of skill. Um, and so this is good for prioritizing, like assessing the outcomes, but also prioritizing like which kinds of items do we need to improve our documentation for? Um, do we need to do some batch edits to fix these? That kind of thing. Um, and oh, and this is the CSV output from that. Unfortunately, you can't like link directly to this to like a page like this. You have to put out a CSV and then like share it on with your your collaborators. Um, but it works. Um, and then the other item, the other tool I wanted to mention was integrality, which um, I think was developed by someone named Sean Frederick. Um, and uh, it's um, it's a little bit more intense to set up, uh, but um, I made an intern do it and it was great. So you, somebody who's new to Wikidata can do this. Um, and it's a really good way to have a snapshot of the progress of, um, uh, of, of a project. Um, it shows um, this sort of uh, visually dense uh, chart of um, completeness, completeness as defined by your own project. So you get to define like what are the what are the properties that you're concerned with, and how many items per subcategory that you're working with um, are, are are covered there. So if we were doing this live, I would hover over to this example um, and uh, click on. You know something like this, to sh which is nice because it, um, if you click on the little, uh, little magnifying glasses, it executes a, uh, a, a Sparkle query that you might not be able to write yourself. I can't write the Sparkle query myself. Um, it will give you a list of all, like in this case, all of the museum items in Brazil that don't have a date of official opening specified in Wikidata. So, um, so this is useful for just seeing like, you know, where, where is your data thin? Um, this is how it looks like when you're, um, you're editing the wiki markup to make it happen. Um, so it takes a little bit of fiddling, but it's, it's worth it. Um, and that's the end of my part. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and stop. Um, but can I say something? Yes, yes, go ahead. So uh, I was gonna talk to you on this part of the Yes, okay. Did you have time? To... So I would have talked about um, tools and metrics and what is needed and what are the solutions that we are finding so far. We don't have time for that. Um, in terms of solutions, one of the solutions is, is Open Refine. The other solution that we are covering is uh, it's going to be covered by Andrew in his session soon this afternoon. So you can go there and watch that presentation instead of this. And if you want to know more about the other solution, which is Commons Impact Metrics, please go to diff dot wikimedia.org and look for the uh, blog post about it. It's in detail there. I don't have time. We don't have time for this here today. I'm so sorry, but you can find everything in that uh, report that we did. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We are going to skip questions because everyone deserves to go have a break, um, but come find us and ask questions. If you have them, we'll be around. Thank you.